Welcome to Life of Bliss and the next installment in Operation Neighbor Tickler. So there was a ton of interest in the unboxing video of the Stereo Integrity HS24s that I got for my theater down here. Uh, I know it took me a little bit of time to get one of these boxes built, but I did get one finished. This one is going to be going in the back corner of my room. And I wanted to go over how I built that and then show you guys some demos since I got it done. There are going to be two more that will be on the front wall here in between the left center and right channel speakers. Uh, but like I said, I got this done. I wanted to go through it with you guys. So first I'll go over the build and then we'll get into some demos. Now with that out of the way, I want to explain real quick what this box is going to be looking like. Um, I'm shooting for just over 13 cubic foot before any bracing or the driver is added. I'm going to be making it 32 inch wide by 40 inch tall by 24 inch deep. And like I said, that should give me around 13.25 cubic foot. Um, the front side is going to be a double baffle of three quarter inch plywood for the driver to mount to. And there's also going to be another three quarter inch of MDF on the front to give it a little bit more of a flush mount look. So it's gonna be recessed slightly. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started and show you the process. Oh, and to handle some of these larger cuts, you'll notice I built an outflow table for my table saw. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works, so that's all that matters. So I'm going to try to get through the build fairly quickly since this is just a standard sealed box. First I cut down my plywood pieces for the front baffle. To make the opening for the sub, instead of using a circle jig and router, I just used the baffle from the shipping container that it came in as a guide. I was able to center the piece on my front baffle and use a flush trim bit to cut out the opening. After that, I clamped the two pieces of plywood for the front baffle together and used a flush trim bit again to make the second opening. To attach the two pieces of plywood, I used a generous amount of wood glue. After centering everything, I clamped all the edges down and secured it into place with brad nails while the glue dried. You'll notice throughout the video that I secure everything with brad nails while the glue dries to speed up the build process. The rest of the box was made out of MDF. To make it easier to handle on the table saw, I cut down the 4x8 pieces closer to the size that I needed with a circular saw, then cut them to the exact dimensions on the table saw. So I've got the front baffle and all the sides cut back here. To make everything as square and flush as possible, I left some of the edges a little bit long and as I piece this together, I'm going to be using a flush trim bit on the router and coming back and trimming everything flush. The first piece to go on was the bottom followed by one of the sides. After clamping and securing with brad nails, I came back and trimmed off the bottom of the side panel. From here, I followed the same process for the back and other side panel. To make sure all the corners had no air gaps, I came back with a generous amount of wood glue to seal everything up. Before adding the top to the box, I cut out some 1.5 inch strips for bracing inside the box. These were secured every eight to nine inches on each panel to make attaching cross braces easier. Once in place, the top of the box was added. To add the Nutrix speak on plate, I used a 2 inch Forstner bit to recess the connector and a 1 inch auger bit to make the center opening. Using the shipping baffle as a guide, I centered and pre-drilled all of the bolt holes. To secure the woofer, I used 1 quarter inch threaded wood insert nuts and bolts. To make sure the insert nuts don't back out or loosen up, I coated the threads with epoxy before screwing them into the back side of the baffle. Next, I cut some more 1.5 inch MDF strips for cross bracing. This was kind of hard to capture since it was inside the box, but I just took my time measuring and adding braces every 8 inches or so. Each end and cross section was heavily glued and secured with two brad nails. Here's what the finished product looked like.
After moving the box to the basement, I stuffed some polyfill into the cross bracing. When you're done, it should look like this. And eh, just kidding. Here's after adding roughly 12 to 14 pounds of the polyfill. Before mounting, I also ran a few strips of gasket tape around the woofer to create a good seal. After wiring it in series for a 4 ohm load, I dropped it into place and bolted it down. Now came the easy part, lifting it up and moving it into place. Well, maybe not so easy. At well over 200 pounds, this thing is really not fun to move. If you end up making something this big yourself, be sure to have some furniture sliders to help slide it into place. So that brings us to here. So like I said, the box is a little over 13 cubic foot before adding the woofer and any of the bracing. After that, I'd say we're about at 11 and a half cubic foot. So pretty, pretty decent sized box here. Um, the box itself without the woofer weighs, I would say about 100 pounds. I haven't weighed it, but it's definitely heavy. Uh, the woofer itself is about 100 pounds, so you're looking at about a 200 pound package here. It's not easy to move around. That's why I waited until it was down in the basement to add the woofer. And even then I've got uh, carpet sliders or furniture sliders underneath to be able to move it where it needs to go. So if you're building anything like this, you definitely want to get it where it needs to be before you add the woofer. For powering the 24, I still have my Crown XLS 1000 hooked up. Bridged at four ohms, it's pushing about 1100 watts is what it claims, which is about half of the RMS power that the HS24 will handle. So I'm kind of limited by my amp right now. I will be installing the FP20,000Q from Symbosan. Uh, I do need to run some 240 volt wiring before I can do that, but it should be pushing about three to four times the amount of power per woofer once I get everything set up. So definitely an upgrade coming soon for that. But for right now, go ahead and enjoy some demos. Are you ready for the ultimate bass test? All right, here we go. Baby shark doo doo. Ooh, yeah, listen to that. Pretty sweet. Baby shark. All right, on to the real test. Mama shark So even though this 24 can get super loud, it's also pretty punchy and responsive to the tighter bass notes like kick drums, gunshots, and things like that. It's hard to tell in the video, but so far I've been pretty impressed with it. If you guys are interested in picking up one of the 24 inch monsters at Stereo Integrity Cells, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. They have many different models and sizes for pretty much any DIY project, whether it be your car or home audio. So I will keep you guys updated as I move along with the progress down here. I've obviously got the other two boxes to build for the 24s. I've got the amplifier to install. I've also got a cool video coming out on different screen materials for projectors and comparing those. Also how to build your own backlit frame for a projector screen. So I've got all that coming out. 
Uh, if you guys would like to hear the 24 play any songs in particular, leave a comment down below with what you'd like to hear. Uh, I'm going to try to come out with a few videos on some of the stuff that you guys want, and I'm not really worried about monetization or anything on those, so it can be pretty much any song you guys would like. Comment down below. Thanks for checking out the video. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon.